Welcome to Fairy Tale Access, where the head fairy's quest is to prove that fairy tales do exist in actual time rather than once upon a time. Together, we will unravel the heroes, young and old, who turn dreams into reality. These are the people who still believe in happily ever after. The discoveries will bend even our most cynical non-believers into believing in fairy tales. Hi, welcome to Fairy Tale Access. My name is Paige, and I am a kids' rule reporter for the Head Fairy. And I'm so excited for you to for me to introduce and congratulate our guest, Miss Jessica Strom. Thank you. Welcome. Um, first question: What is the main purpose of like becoming Miss New Hampshire? So. I really wanted to get more involved with the community. I wanted to inspire young girls just like yourself. Um, you know, people all over, not just New England, but all over the country if I can. Um, you know, it, it, it took me three times to win the crown. I was first runner up in Rhode Island in 2013. I competed in Massachusetts last year. So it really meant a lot for me to be able to take home the title and, and really get involved with the community and, and different um, platforms that I have and, and work with different organizations. And also, I love your dress and your sash and your crown. Thank you very much. You're very stylish yourself. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, what did you do to like prepare yourself for the pageant? So I worked with a lot of the sponsors that sponsored the pageant that I'll actually be sponsored with this year. Um, I went and worked with Rita Sorrentino, who is the makeup sponsor, and she taught me how to do makeup. I thought I knew how to do my makeup, but she took it to a whole nother level. Um, and then I worked with Neil, and he kind of taught me some specifics to hold my hair. Um, I worked with a trainer and a nutritionist as well, and I had a pageant coach that helped me through interview skills and some walking skills and helped style my wardrobe for the weekend. So I really took advantage of those things. That's really cool. Yes. Like, what did you do to, like, like plan during your reign? What do I plan to do during my reign? Yeah. So, I, like I said, I plan to really, um, really really influence young girls to put themselves out there, to do things that you didn't think you might be able to do. Um, I have always chased my dreams. It's what really moves me. Um, I set goals for myself. When I feel like I don't have set goals for myself, I get a little bit bored. Um, so for instance, this year, I made the Patriots cheerleading squad. So I'm a Patriots cheerleader as well. And I, it took four years to make that team. So I finally made the squad, and I've been involved with some charities through that. But I really want to work closely this year um, with my, my title, working with the American Cancer Society. I have had numerous people close to me and family friends who have suffered all different types of cancer have been affected by cancer. Uh, so I really want to get involved with that. Valeria, my teen, and I are actually going to the American Cancer Society Masquerade Ball in Providence next Friday. So that'll be um, a great way to really get involved and, and meet some people there and see what I can do. Um, and then just kind of get involved in the community. I, I met a gentleman the other night that does Habitat for Humanity, and they're building a home for vets in Nashua, so I'm going to reach out to him and, and help him build one of those homes and just do as much as I can, really. I mean, no specific, I, I don't really have a specific platform per se, but I just want to do as much as I can to, to get involved. All right. And you just said that you're a New England Patriots cheerleader. Yes. Um, what did it take to, like, get, like, make the team? Practice makes perfect. It took a lot of... Um, I really had to stay fit. Once I, once I made, th made it through preliminaries and finals, there was a two-week boot camp where we did some media training, and, and we worked with one of the reporters for the Patriots, and she kind of taught us you know, how, to, how to answer questions, difficult questions um, that fans may have, media may have. And then we worked with the trainer and did some really intense workouts, and, and I survived that, and, and my name was put on the roster, so that was just an amazing feeling. So just really working out a lot, staying fit, staying healthy, and, and finally made it. That's really cool. Thank you. Now back to the pageant. Yes. Like, um, you've won, like, like, rewards and, mm -hmm. like, I don't know how to say it, but... Sponsorships. Sponsorships, mm -hmm. yeah. 
How did like how did that happen? So there are multiple sponsors that I'll work with throughout the year. So I had mentioned Rita, who does my makeup. She'll she'll be giving me some more lessons for nationals. Um, all all of the sponsors are going to be really preparing me for the National Miss USA pageant. We're not sure where or when it will be. Um, sometime in the spring or the summer, I'm sure. And they'll really be preparing me. So Rita will be giving me some more makeup lessons and making sure that my skin is nice and healthy and glowing for stage. Um, Neil will practice different hair looks for me and really perfecting that. I do have a new trainer. I just worked out with her last week. She's absolutely amazing. Um, and she'll give me a nutritional plan as well to kind of lead me up to the pageant. And then there are a few other sponsors. I get a um, scholarship to Linwood University. Uh, scholarship to New York Film Academy, New York, um, New England Hair Academy. So there's all sorts of different prizes and, and awards. I, I haven't even had the time yet to really dig into them. Um, I've heard you've recently won national recognition among colleagues at the Circle mm -hmm. of Excellence. Yes. Like, what is that? So what that is, um, there are 35 operating companies. I work for a food distribution company, so I'm an outside sales representative. So I go every day and visit different customers, whether it's um, Nashua Soup Kitchen is a customer of mine, or a golf club, or just an independent restaurant, breakfast, lunch place, and I sell them their food, their chemicals, their paper goods, whatever they may need. So my sales... Um, for the year had grown over my base of last year. It's all sorts of numbers that go into um, how you win and how you can qualify, and I did win. Um, I was actually only one of 28 women out of two or 300 of us that won, which was wow. pretty exciting. And I went down and we went to Arizona, and it was just a weekend full of recognition. I mean, from the second we got there to the second we left, it was all about us and the winners and how we've achieved and how we've grown for the company and done well for the company. It was a great experience. I hope to win again this year. Yeah. Well, um, what are your hobbies and like interests? So when I am not working out or focusing on my fitness and nutrition. I like to fish a lot. Um, we have a little 17 and a half foot boat. So we fish a lot in the summer, ski a lot in the winter. I saw a couple of snowflakes coming down today. Yeah. So some of you out there may not like the snow, but I actually can't wait for it to snow to put my skis back on this year. Um, and then I like to hike, you know, in between seasons and really do as much outdoor stuff and spend time with family and friends, of course. Yeah. Um, do you have any family traditions? Yes, actually. Um, we're not, we went early this year, but usually every year for Thanksgiving, we spend Thanksgiving in Mexico. We started doing it probably six years ago. Um, we're members of a resort down there, Palace Resorts, and it's like a second home to us. I mean, they know who we are. Every time we, we come, every time we visit, we usually know that have the same waiter or, you know, the same servers will wait on us throughout the week, and um, that's been kind of our family tradition. We're all kind of running every which way, so it's very important for us to take one family vacation a year, and it's usually that. So we will be in the States for Thanksgiving this year, but next year probably most likely back in Mexico. All right. Um, say you weren't in the pageant or mm -hmm. you weren't a New England Patriots cheerleader, what, were your, what would your career choices be? I would... I would most likely still be in food service. I grew up in food service. Um, I shined silverware when I was four or five years old when my mom was leaving, or my dad rather was leaving his day shift as a chef, and my mom was coming in to waitress for the evening. Um, and then I started hostessing and waitressing and bartending myself. And we still cater as a family here and there. And once it's kind of in you, it's hard to leave. And I'm a super foodie. I love food more than anything. Um, so I would probably, I would, I think that I would still stay in food service. You know, um, who knows what the next couple of years will bring? Who knows what my reign will bring? But I do love my career. I do love what I do. I have a great relationship with my customers. So I, I see myself excelling in that as well. Um. If you had to choose between a favorite book or movie of all time, what would it be? Ooh, a favorite book or movie. Well, one of my favorite movies, which was actually a book as well, was A Walk to Remember. Um, it was about a leukemia patient um, who ends up passing away, and it's kind of a love story. And that came out just short after a friend of mine had actually passed from leukemia. Mm -hmm. So that, that movie has still stayed pretty dear to my heart. So. Um. What advice would you give to like someone around my age? Mm -hmm. Like what type of advice? Like 
I would tell you that if you have a goal, if you have a dream, to do whatever it takes to achieve it. Never give up. Always push yourself because there might be people who are telling you that, you know, you could never do this or you could never do that or, you know, you might not think that you could do it. But if you stick to your goals, if you stay driven, if you stay determined and you're persistent and you work as hard as you can, you can achieve anything that you believe in. If you believe in it yourself, if you know that this is what you want to do, you just go for it and you don't let anybody hold you back and you just, like I said, stay driven, stay determined and, and you, will, you will absolutely exceed your goals. That's really nice. Yes. Um, one more question. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sound too rude or anything, but mm -hmm. how old are you? I'm 25. Okay. I just turned 25. Well, happy birthday. Thank you very much. Um, October 9th was my birthday, so I keep joking that I can't believe I'm a quarter century old, but I guess I could say I'm a quarter century young. I have a long life ahead of me, but I mean, these past couple of years have been just amazing, so I can't wait to see what's ahead. Now, there's anything else like that you'd want people to know about you? Um, like just know about me. Oh, there's a lot to know about me. Um, I always keep a smile on my face. If I can do anything, if I can, you know, meet somebody, if I can leave anything with them, it would be a smile. If I can make you smile, that just makes my day. Um, and like I said, to always stay true to yourself. All, you know, keep determined, push yourself, exceed your goals. There's nothing, no greater feeling than, than knowing that you've achieved something that you've worked hard for. So I think that, you know, if anyone were to ask one thing about me or three words to describe me, I would say driven, determined, and persistent. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being here today, Ms. Strom. Thank you. And we wish you the absolute best on your quest. Thank you very much. And a special thank you to Tudor Teddy for their sponsorship. Until next time, keep asking questions. We're only human. We rely on our courage. The kind of courage that shows up when we need it. And when cancer is least expecting it. Courage. Just one reason more of us are surviving cancer than dying from it. Give now to the American Cancer Society. Hi, welcome back to Fairy Tale Access. I'm Denise Marie, and we're back with. Miss Strom, Miss New Hampshire 2016. I just had a couple of more questions that I wanted to sure. ask her. So tell us about your platform. So my platform this year is going to be working with the American Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. I have had multiple family members and friends who have been affected by cancer, all different types of cancer. So I figured working with the American Cancer Society rather than working with specific cancer organizations would be more beneficial to me. Um, I had a friend of mine die from, pass from leukemia when we were 12. Um, my mom had cervical cancer, my dad had prostate cancer, um, my grandfather died from melanoma, so it's just all, all sorts of different, you know, strings of cancer that have been affected, um, that have affected my family and my friends. So I'm really going to work with them. Um, I had mentioned to Paige that we are going to the American Cancer Society Masquerade Ball on Friday in Providence. So I'm really hoping to connect with some, some people there and kind of start to get um, a schedule and see where they need help and where I can really be involved and then hoping to plan a fundraiser. I'm not sure where, when, what it'll be, but I'm kind of starting to brainstorm, um, put on a big fundraiser to raise money for the American Cancer Society. Oh, that's great. Yes. Would you be visiting patients at some point, do you think? I would love to visit, visit patients. Um, I was able to visit my friend twice while she was in the hospital, and it just, it just brightens their day. You know, they're used to seeing their family. They're used to seeing the same nurses, you know. So to see somebody else and kind of bring some sparkle to their day would, would be great. Oh, that's great. And what did you have to do to prep? For the Miss USA pageant? So prepping for Miss USA this year, um, we don't know where or when it will be. So it's going to be keeping physically fit and, and nutritionist. Um, and then I'll be working with our hair and makeup sponsor to really perfect my look. And then I know that I'll be working with a couple of different pageant coaches um, to work on walking and really go deeper into interview um, because it is a more uh, strenuous interview that we will have for USA. And then, you know, just prepping my wardrobe and, and getting into a schedule. And I mean, it's just still 
kind of not real to me that I'll be walking on the Miss USA stage. It's only something that I've ever dreamed about, and to actually be here will just be incredible. What type of scholarships did you win um, as far as the New Miss New Hampshire pageant? So I, I won a scholarship to Linwood University. Um, so I'm honestly not even sure where exactly it is, so I need to kind of look into that a little bit more. I do want to finish. I haven't finished school, believe it or not. I jumped right into a career. Um, when I graduated high school, I did go down to Florida for a year and took some classes, moved home, took some classes in Fall River, Mass., um, and then just kind of jumped right into a career. Mm -hmm. So I would like to finish my degree, probably in business, um, administration or, or something along those lines. So I'll use that scholarship for that. And then I believe I got a scholarship for the New England Hair Academy and um, the New York Film Academy. So I'll be trying to take advantage of those as best as I can. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. What was it like going into the pageant? Were you, what was your plan? What did you expect? And what was really different? So if another young girl wants to go into it. So for me, I, it had taken me three years to win the crown. I was first runner up in Rhode Island in 2013. I competed in mass last year and I was not a finalist. I didn't place at all. Um, but it was still a great experience, don't get me wrong. But this year I just felt like I was ready. I just felt like it was mine. I felt like I was already walking around with the crown on my head. Um, I just, when I walked into pageant weekend, I knew that I had done everything I possibly could and there was nothing more I could do and it was in God's hands at that point. So once they called, preliminaries was amazing. I had a great time um, Saturday night, and then Sunday you wake up and you do some more practice and some more rehearsals, and then I went in for my interview, nailed my interview. So I walked out of there feeling extremely confident, more confident than I was when I walked in. And then from there, we did some more rehearsals, and we went on stage. When top 10 was called, I said, okay, I kind of took a step back. And then when they called me for top five, I just knew that it was mine. I just had this feeling. I was so calm and collected backstage. I was just sitting there watching the teens go, watching Valeria get crowned, and then I just knew it was my time. They asked me my onstage question. I had the perfect answer for it, made the crowd laugh a little bit. And then um, once I walked back into my spot and took my final walk, and I just kind of knew that it was me. And they kept calling, you know, fourth, third, second runner up. And then, you know, the first runner up and I were at the end of the stage, and I just, I kind of knew. It was the weirdest feeling, but I think I think I knew. Someone was telling me that it was mine, so. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. So what advice? A lot of people think that you go to high school, and right after high school, you should go right into college. Mm -hmm. But you took a different route, and you yes. took a break for a year. And mm -hmm. a lot of young people in Europe and the Middle East do that as mm -hmm. well. So can you describe how you think that influenced your direction? Did it give you more time to think about where mm -hmm. you really wanted to go? Mm -hmm. I absolutely think it did. I think that, you know, you come out of, I came out of high school at 17. So I was young for my grade. So you come out of high school at 17. Who at 17 knows exactly what they're going to do? Some people may. You know, I always thought I was going to be an attorney. I always knew that I was going to be a lawyer. My dad said I would do a great job because I never gave up. I always won the argument. Um, so I did. I, I when I went to school, I was going to be a paralegal. Um, and then the cards just kind of fell where they did. And I had gone to dinner with my dad and some of the people from my company. And they said that I had, you know, a great um, personality. And they thought that I would be great in the sales field. And they knew my, my culinary background growing up in it. And so I decided to take that route. I think that it is a, a good idea if you don't know what you're doing, if you never really felt like you're a student, to take that time to really figure out what you want to do. Maybe go work in the industry that you think that you might want to have a career in and see if that's even what you want to do. Um, but it's different for everybody. You know, my choice, I knew that I had to pay for school myself, so my choice was to take that time off and take the opportunity, and I could not be happier with my career now. So it really depends on the person, I think, but yeah. I think that taking that time to really figure out what you want to do is, is worth it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what was your favorite book of all time? favorite book of all time. I wasn't really a reader, to be honest with you, and maybe that's why the whole paralegal attorney thing might not have worked out. There's a lot of reading in that. Absolutely. But um, my favorite book of all time, um, 
maybe A Walk to Remember. I know I said that was my favorite movie of all time, but I read the book as well, and they kind of went hand in hand. Um, but like I said, I'm not a huge reader. I don't even watch a lot of movies. Some people think I'm crazy. Have you seen this movie? Have you seen that movie? I just, I've always been more active, and I don't really watch a lot of TV and, you know, sit unless I'm watching the news or something like that or specific shows. But I, I, I would like, that was on my New Year's resolution, to read a book at least a month, but I haven't really followed up very well with it. No. <laughs> been well, a little busy. Can try it again this I'll year. try it again this year. I'll write it back on my New Year's resolution. So A Walk to Remember, mm -hmm. that was a pretty deep storyline. It was. Did you read the book first and then see the movie? I think I saw the movie and then read the book. Um, and the reason I did was because I wanted to dig deeper into the story. Um, I had explained to Paige, I had a friend who died from leukemia. I had mentioned that earlier. So that story kind of happened while all of that was happening or, or soon thereafter. So it was nice to read a love story about it and see how she went through it. And she kind of kept it a secret until the end with him. Mm -hmm. And she was just such an amazing person, just like my friend Amber. So I kind of connected with the book and with the movie, I think is why it's, it's one of my favorites. Oh, how did that grief affect you going through high school? What um, encouragement could you give to others at that time? It was really difficult. I, I remember the day like it was yesterday. They, I, was in a, I was in fifth grade, and we had team classes. So they gathered us all together. They came in, and I know that Amber had been out of school for a while. Um, we didn't really have cell phones back then, believe it or not, in fifth and sixth grade. And um, so I didn't really know what was going on. I just knew that she had been sick. I remember playing with her on the playground you know, a couple of days early, and she felt weak, and she said, said that her legs were hurting. I had no idea what was going on. So um, they gathered us into the room, and they said, your friend Amber has been diagnosed with leukemia. She's probably not going to be in school for the rest of the year. And myself and a few of my other close girlfriends just broke down. It was just this beautiful girl. She was an amazing figure skater. She had this brilliant, radiant personality. And to think that that was happening to her just crushed us all. Um, you know, she did get the bone marrow plant, transplant. It didn't take, and unfortunately, you know, she is in a better place now. But being that young, I think that's kind of motivated me, and that's really stuck with me. I actually have a tattoo for her um, on my back. Um, but it, it really has motivated me to never give up because and, and always chase your dreams because you never know when this day could be your last or when something tragic could happen. So if you just go for your dreams and reach for the stars, you'll have no regrets. And, you know, I really think I've had a couple of things happen, um, you know, I wasn't going to try out for the Patriots again, and then another close family friend of ours passed, a young um, gentleman that I used to have a super crush on, actually. Um, and he passed away, and I pushed myself to do it because, again, you just you only live once. You're only young for so long. You never know what could happen. And, you know, it's, it is tough, and you are going to get through it, but use it as kind of motivation to do other things and mm -hmm. inspire others. Good. So... Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. How mm -hmm. did that all come about? So with my job, I have been able to travel. Um, I competed in Rhode Island when I had first moved to Rhode Island for my job. Um, and then I took a year off, um, didn't compete. I moved back to Massachusetts for personal reasons, relationship reasons. Um, moved back to Massachusetts, still wanted to compete in a pageant. And then this year, I was lucky enough for my territory to have transferred. And I said, perfect, you know, why not add another state to the books? And, you know, everything happens for a reason. And it was my year. And I, you know, New Hampshire is such an amazing state. Um, you know, all of the different landscapes, all the different things you can do. I'm so happy that I moved here. And I couldn't, I, you know, I'm so excited to represent the state at Miss USA. Oh, that's great. Where are you from originally? From Massachusetts. From Massachusetts. I grew up on Cape Cod. Yep. Oh. Yes, lived all over the place. I think I've lived in, I lived in more states before the age of five than I know to count. So did a lot of traveling when I was young. Oh, that's good. Yes. So is there anything else that we left out that the audience should know about you for a quick wrap-up? Quick wrap-up. Um, if you ever have any questions or you ever need any motivation or you just need somebody to talk to, I'm here. Um, you know, you can follow me on Facebook. You can message me. I just live to inspire people, and I just want to be able to, you know, give people a voice. And like I said, always chase your dreams. Never give up. Do as much as you possibly can. There's no better reward than knowing that you've achieved a goal. There's no better feeling than, you know, having your dreams come true. And I just hope that everybody at one point in their lives can feel that way because it's, it's incredible. 
It is. Thank you. I think you're going to be a great Thank role model much. for New Hampshire. Thank you. I'm so excited for you, and we Thank can't wait much. to see how you do. Yes. So until next time, keep asking questions. The answers are out there. And the states and the Miss, Mar the Miss America pageant offer some of the best scholarships in the United States for young women. So take another look. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.